not to the level I've come to expect. Alright. Just start doing a, a four hour segment, 30 minutes at a time of uh, the Russ Martin show. We always on the weekend. something funny for some audio <sighs> kind of like our police officer thing we did the other day sir I need your license I'm trying to tell you Chunk. I need you I heard one on the bear this morning it was pretty funny about an old lady the troopers pulled her over she was running 70 and a 45 it was hilarious Something funny on the internet. I, th I think I can quote. I, c I think I can quote it. Can you get me something to go off if I can look it up? Uh, it was on the uh, John Boy and Billy show. No, it was this morning. It's it it was the uh, John Boy and Billy Playhouse. It, they play. It's been on there before. It's about a little old lady. The trooper pulls her pulls her over and says, "Ma'am, I caught you running seventy in a forty-five. and she goes. Oh no, your radar must be wrong. And he says, no ma'am. Um, she said, well I, I was, he said, you're, you're passing everybody on the highway. And she says, well your radar must not be wrong. He goes, no ma'am, you actually were running 70 in a, four, in a 40 mile an hour speed zone. And she said, well the sign said 70. He goes, ma'am, you're our own highway 70. <laughs> he, he said, I am just glad before you got to Highway 390. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that before. <laughs> it's pretty it's fucking been a while. Old. It's fucking pretty hilarious. She goes, Oh dear. <laughs> John Boy and Billy and them have some pretty good shit on there. To, uh... Huh? Light over where it sure is bright tonight. Okay, man. Uh, you okay? Which one is this? I'm waiting on you. The recent one? This is your job. I'm waiting oh, on you. Oh, this is the this Oh, you seem very irritated. I am. I, I really am. But I feel like this crap is what I'm getting the tickets for. I was getting out of your way. You was 
speeding up, tailing me. So I move over and you stop me. So yeah, I am. Wait a minute, wait a minute, okay, okay. The, 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 you know why I stopped you today? Well, uh, I saw you were speeding up, so I moved over and then you stopped me. Yeah. This old gal that ended up dying in, in jail. Now, uh, the only thing really, uh, it's going to come down that the trooper, and it's going to be total bullshit. His stop right there matters to a hill of shit compared to what happened in that jail. Because once he really... Once he relinquishes you to that jail personnel, what happens? He goes to Denny's and eats or do whatever he does. Yeah. What? I'll, it doesn't. It doesn't concern him after that point of what it is. When it comes to court, yes. But she acted a fool. All right. Are you done? You asked me what was wrong, and I told you. Okay. So now I'm telling you. Okay. You mind putting out your cigarette, please? Don't mind. I'm in my car, but I have to put out my cigarette. Well, you can step on out now. I don't have to step out of my step car. Step out of the car. All right, well, and, and Captain Howard, retired from Dallas uh, Sheriff's Office, he had a good point. The better way to handle it would have been to just get her information, write her a warning, and let her go. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, uh... We'll play it out and let it roll. Step no, out of the car. No, you don't have the right. Step not, out of the car. You do not have the right to do that. I do have the right. Now step I out or I will say, remove you. I refuse you. to talk to you other than to identify myself. Step and out or okay, I will remove you. I didn't get her moved for a failure. Step out or I will remove you. I'm giving you a lawful order. Get out of the car now. Right. No, you're getting removed because he asked you, which is a lawful order, to remove your cigarette. Uh... Anytime when a law officer comes up to you, they go, set down that Coke, or put out your cigarette, or uh, stop spitting on the floor. That is a lawful order. Okay, well, let me put in this example. If I was a trooper and I walked up to you and you had your window down or halfway down enough, but you're sitting there smoking, Well, I've been pulled over, and we won't say by the trooper's name, but he, I had a cigarette in my hand. He did not ask me to put it out. And some it may not bother. Um, he actually, he was actually pretty damn nice about it. But why he pulled me over was a little chicken shit move because he just seen me leave the courthouse buying my tags for my pickup which <laughs> people put him on right there in the parking lot so if, if i don't feel if, sorry if, if he'd have ran if he'd have ran my truck he would have found that i just purchased my tags but no he waited until i got about four miles out of town and ran me or pulled me over but he never ran my tag uh he pulled me over for my tags being out and i have my stuff in my hand uh but and then, then what he what he uh, focused on was the fact that my windows tent was too dark. It's actually right at Texas State level. And it's it, well, it wasn't in this truck. It was in the, oh. in, in that S10. Oh yeah, uh, that that truck was like I could probably make you a list. It's got them on the violation time. Yeah, the but stupid you know what? emblem on the back needed to go. But you know what? All that all that shit on that truck, I went to. I, it, it that truck went everywhere Fort Worth, Dallas, at Metroplex, everywhere. Nobody ever fucked with me in that truck. But when the minute James got in it and drove that so much Wichita Falls, the cops were on him every time. Fat, uh, well, just motherfucker. The only once they get up there and see can't it. Talk, can't really talk bad about him because he's dead now, but... Uh, I'm pretty sure he would go, yeah, I'm kind of hefty. Uh, but straight up, um, what was you doing to, to draw the attention 
of Wichita Falls PD. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Uh, you know, because I, that truck, we, we drove that truck, me, you, and John drove that truck up there to Wichita all the time like that with them dark tinted windows. And uh, we, we was never stopped for it. Three dudes in the cab of a little S10 truck. You know, it's just different shit like that. So anyway, keep on playing your little video. We only have about 58 minutes of this, and this is where we'll get into our good shit. And then, nobody wants to use Wi Fi, goddammit. Yeah, no, I'm going to remove you. And I'm calling my I'm going to yank you out of here. Okay, you're going to yank me out of my car? Yeah. Okay. All right. 25. Let's, let's do this. You yeah. Wait, go into yeah. it. Yeah. Don't, don't touch me. Get don't out of the car. Don't touch me. I'm not under arrest. You don't have the right to take me. I'm black. I have rights. I'm under arrest for what? 25 for what? 7 County FM 1098. Just for what? 290. Send another unit. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. Now, why am I being apprehended? You're trying to give me a chance to say get out of the car. Why am I being apprehended? You can open my car door. I'm going to drag you out of here. So you're going to get out of my car. Get out of the car. Get out of the car. And then you I will light me? you up. Get out. Wow. Now. Wow. Get out of the car. Right for a failure to signal. You're doing all of this for Get over there. Right, yeah. All right, all right, hold on. You can tap, double tap the screen and make it bigger. All right. When he said, I will light you up. That is one of the things, while it is not something bad, it does not look good on you as a law officer. I will tase you. Light you up is one of them, like, uh, kind of like uh, on the show, they said, uh, I'm going to do this and have fun at it. Even though it will be fun if you word it a different way. Well, uh, go ahead and keep playing because it's almost to the end of it. Yeah. And uh, and what it's not going to show in this one is there's a female officer comes up and she had seen a lot of it as she had pulled up in the car. And she said, ma'am, ma'am, no, uh, you resisted. Let's Go ahead. For a failure to signal. Yep, oh, for a failure to signal. Get off the phone. Oh, let's go. Get off the phone. Yeah. Uh, well, this thing says U.S. Warren found dead in jail did not deserve arrest. Well, actually, for those of you, okay, if we ever get any listeners who are solving citizens, uh, I don't know what root kind of crack you're on. Maybe you make it yourself and you grow it from mushrooms and, 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 and well, shit. Well, the thing is, the thing is, she, how, how in the hell did she die and locked up in a cell? That's what people don't know. Uh, the only thing that's visual evidence is this and a video and, and, and a security camera of them people bringing in a gurney that they found her at the jail, which is like three days after this whole incident happened. Yeah. I believe this bitch killed herself. Well, she a good, honest black woman. She can't be in jail and then go get indicted. Oh, uh, well, too bad. Too sad. If you would just shut the fuck up. It's like I tell everybody around me. You're not right when you're around me. You are absolutely wrong. It is my job to enforce that. Well, you're not a perfect motherfucker. No. And, but goddamn it, I have common sense and logicalness. And... And the thing is, the deal but is... if she would have kept her mouth shut, it's just like... If she would have heard the trooper say, later on in a, in a, in a, in a, in a longer clip of it, ma'am, I wasn't going to write you a ticket. I was going to give you a warning. Which is basically saying, uh, there's a fucking turn signal on that column right there. You used it to go that way and that way. <coughs> she automatically assumed she was going to jail. Yeah, but automatically. I think she martyred herself after the whole, you know what a martyr, a martyr is, right? Yeah. Kind of like a terrorist, like, I'm a martyr, I'm going to blow stuff. No, the, I think she martyred herself, well, thinking, oh, I'll just push more for the black people that are, are uh, harassed by white cops. <clears throat> it's well, basically, that's basically what it stemmed down to. That's the, that's the best I can come up with. Unless she's, I'm a good guy for a black woman with a good job. Yeah, I can't be in jail. <laughs> hey, look. I really you, should stop watching the rest of my show. You fuck up. You fuck up. You know, if that if that if that guy pulls you over, I don't give a shit what color you are. If he asks you to do something, do what he says to do. 
Because if you don't, you're disobeying a, a, a lawful order, and that's immediate arrest right there. That's right. I mean, don't be stupid. Just just follow what he says because. And that goes to you, sovereign citizen people. Uh, I don't know what this sovereign thing is that y'all pulled out of y'all's asses. I'd imagine y'all's ass hurt. Well, you know what I mean. And it stems from something that came from Britain and Canada. So, I guess. Well, I'm real smart. I don't. I don't get sovereign citizen. Well, what is the jail like? I, I mean, I've been there. Uh, I think most uh, uh, normal people have been to jail, don't you? I have. I've been in jail. Some are pretty cool, and some of them ain't worth shit. But it's a it, it's an experience. <laughs> it's all in itself. Yeah, you your know. first time going to jail, it's like, oh fuck, what am I about to walk into? You like, like you I was, know, I was. You know heart. what? You know what the first fucking thing is that clicks to me. When I went to jail the first time, fuck, I'm back in high school again. No. How in the fuck am I going to get out of this? Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, you're. Because I can't call mom. You, you're, <laughs> your fight or flight mode uh, kicks <laughs> in and you're like, well, I'm not going to fly out of this third floor. I'm overlooking the street. I'll probably make it into the dumpster. <laughs> no, it ain't that. You, you, know, you know, because my mom always well, told my me. My first thought was like, how am I going to. These bars <laughs> <laughs> my, my mom always told me, she said, you go to jail, you got your ass in there, and you figure out how to get out. Okay, well. I sat there for 20 days, five days, and they're like, uh, uh, a good, uh. Yeah, but that good, was over bullshit. Yeah, good behavior, we're going to let you go. Where's my goddamn computer? Your truck's still out there. I don't get the fuck with you. The fuck, yeah. <clears throat> I know the, I know the. The third time I was locked up. Three of twelve? Huh? Three of twelve? Three of twelve? Three of twelve times? I ain't I haven't been locked up that many times. You want one? We can get you one real quick. Uh, I've been locked up four times. The the one out the, the, the very best time I was ever locked up was when I was in Andy Griffith's jail. <laughs> I was uh, yeah, basically over, over in... Uh, uh, Mayberry. Over in Whitesboro, Texas. And... Uh, uh, A.K.A. I, Mayberry. Well, I started I started it out in, in Cook County. And I spent five days in Cook Town, County. And then they shipped me over to to, uh, to Whitesboro. Ain't that still Cook County? No, that's, that's Grayson County. But they said you in city jail? But they... But, uh, I was in the city jail. It was like 15 stories tall, and you could hear like I don't know what was going on above, but you would see the SWAT guys. You, you no, could just hang out no, kind of around. No, it, I was in there with like people who didn't pay child support, and uh, uh, it, it wasn't nothing like uh, that. Uh, DUIs. It, it wasn't nothing like that. It, uh, the, I went in. I went in there on on a Thursday night. Uh, I did have an ass load of money when after them 25 days because it was two paychecks I didn't get to do anything with. You know that? I think oh. I eat McDonald's every day. I was living a good life. Oh, yeah. I went in there on Thursday afternoon. They processed me in and I went before the judge. Uh, She said, she told me, she said, you owe me a, you owe me a, you owe me $200, $255. Can I borrow that? And, uh. Yeah, we got a place where you borrow, you borrow. She, she, uh, she asked me, said, where, where have you been? I said, I've been locked up over in Cook County for the same traffic violation. And she said, uh, okay, you owe me $155. She said, the chief has a work program. Uh, if you work with the chief tomorrow, uh, I'll cut you loose Saturday. And uh, everything. I said, okay, ma'am, I'll, I'll do that. You know, and, and she was good to go. Well, when when she left the court, the, the, the little area where I was locked up, they never put me in a cell. They never moved me or nothing. They just took my possessions. And uh, that night I sat with I sat with the, the officer who was on duty, the dispatcher, 
and uh, they asked me, said, we have three places that we can eat from. To, uh, what would you like? And I said, yeah, I, don't, I don't know. It's up to y'all. They said, well, we have a really good Mexican food restaurant. And I said, okay. He said, well, tell me what you want. And I said, I don't, I don't have no clue. He goes, I usually get the enchilada dinner. And he said, okay. It's not like we were like, you get the Happy Meal. And yeah. You don't get the toy. Yeah, a happy, happy Meal and you don't get the toy. And uh, he went and got the meal. And we sat there and uh, ate dinner. Well, uh, here comes a, here comes a, a, a Grayson County Sheriff's Officer. And he's got a drunk Mexican girl. She is butt fucking naked and hot as she can be. And drunk. He said, I'm gonna have to put her put her in cell because she's she's real defensive, you know, and wants to fight. And uh I told that all I told them, I said, because I done seen where my bed was gonna be. My bed was gonna be adjacent to her bed. And uh she went in there and they locked her up. Well, about 12.30, I, I told him, I said, I, I'm, I'm, I need to go to bed because I got to work with Chief in the morning. Okay, good night. Well, that girl, girl woke up and she goes, do you got cigarettes? And I said, yeah, I got cigarettes. She goes, I'll suck your dick to, for a cigarette. And I said, no. <laughs> and I kept, I kept telling her no. And she was screaming, he's fucking me, he's fucking me. Well, that off that that dispatcher come in there, and uh, I I done there was there was a there was a pot on the other side of the room. I done got over there and went. I was still in my clothes, and uh, I told her I, I told I told the dispatcher I said, no, I'm not messing with her. She's wanting us. She's wanting a cigarette. She's promised me all this shit. She said, okay, you stay over where you're at. She goes, I'll take care of her. Well, they called Grayson County Sheriff Department, and they shipped her to Sherman. <laughs> well, the deputy, the officer had been out on his route, and he came back in there, and he goes, uh, what's going on? And I said, she's wanting to suck my dick for a cigarette. And, and I said, I ain't, I ain't doing nothing in here to fuck, fuck up nothing. I said, I'm trying to get all this shit cleared up, because I got to get back. To my regular, my regular place, and he goes, "You're a good man." So, the next morning I get up and I go work with, I, I go right around all day with the police chief. You know what? Uh, nothing. <laughs> uh, the, you know, cause the judge, the judge said if you go, if you go with uh, police chief and help help him do on the work detail. Uh, I'll yeah, his real hotel consists of jack and shit. And and uh, we rode around. Hell, I, I, we even went to Sherman and got his car serviced and just <laughs> shit like that. And uh, you know, and then that night he, you know, that afternoon he brought me back to the jail. Uh, well, well, hell, that morning when I well, when I left, I was uh, when he got there and the, and the chief got hold of me. He goes, "You got cigarettes?" You smoke? And I said, I got one cigarette left I've been saving. And uh, it, I said, it was in my stuff. He goes, you got money on your books? I said, I've, I've got about $400 on my books. And he said, uh, he told that that officer, he goes, let him sign some money out. And there's a convenience store. I mean, the convenience store is like across the street that far. He goes, Chief told him, he said, Go over and get you a whatever you want and get you some cigarettes. And he said, let me do my let me do my paperwork and then we're gonna start out our day. And we rolled around all fucking day long. We went hell we went up on Lake uh Lake Texoma, went to Sherman, got his car service. I never did a fucking thing the whole day <laughs> I was in that car. And he took me back and he goes, Well, he said, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell the judge that that, that you work today. And he said that covers your your uh your hundred dollars. He said you still owe her fifty five dollars. 
I said, okay, no problem. Well, uh, I went back in there and, and uh, I thought, I told him, I said, well, I'm, I'm ready to go to bed. Y'all gonna lock me down? And uh, it was the same guy that was with me the night before. He goes, hell, uh, hell, Mr. Gray, we're not gonna lock you down. You ain't going nowhere. You're the only motherfucker here. And uh, <laughs> he said, uh, We, we watched TV probably up to about 11.30, and I said, well, I'm tired. I, I rolled around with Chief a whole lot today, and I'm tired. He goes, hold on. I, I'm going to be the officer on duty tomorrow morning, and uh, then, I go on, then I'll go on my, 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 my days off. He said, if you'll get up about 6.30 in the morning, <coughs> sweep and mop the jail in the, in the, in the lobby, and mop and everything like that and police around the around the building he said i'll i'll tell the judge that you completed your deal and he said i'll cut you loose about 9 30 in the morning and i said uh hey no fucking problem what was that one where the trooper was transporting you someplace that's that's the deal uh he said uh where, where do you need to go back to i said i need to go back to gainesville that's where my truck is at and uh, he said, hey, you got anybody can come pick you up? And I said, no, ain't nobody can come pick me up. And take me. I, he goes, so you're going to have to walk the 15 miles back to Gainesville? And I said, looks like it. And he goes, no, hang on. And uh, he got, he went off to another room and he come back. And that, that black trooper that hauled me over there come to there and he goes, he walked in there and he says, Mr. Gray? And I said, how are you, bud? He goes, I'm Is this the where he stops the guy before you go to the judge? No, that was that was ongoing. That yeah, was, you missed that part. Yeah. But anyway. No, no people want to hear that. Oh. Uh, it's only entertaining part of this whole story. Yeah, well, the deal was when, when this black trooper was taking me over to Whitesboro, uh, he, clocked, he clocked an old boy running. I can't remember how fast he was running. But he told me, he goes, you want to go for a ride? And I said, well, I'm damn sure not in really no hurry to go to jail. And uh, he flipped around and chased that old boy down. And, and they ended up getting somebody else to, uh, to haul him in. But he was drunk. And it was pretty good. And what day. did the trooper tell the judge? Why you were late? Oh, yeah. He said because we, we, we were tracing, we was tracing down a, a spader. And it, it was it was it was a crazy deal, but he he hauled me back. He picked me up, and he didn't. Uh, at that time, at that time when they picked you up, uh, now I don't know if they still do it, but they put you in the front seat. Oh, I never let anybody ride in the front seat with me. But uh, oh, yeah, you'll be handcuffed and gagged. Yeah. But he 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 didn't put no handcuffs on me or anything. And uh, he put me in the front seat, and uh, he talked to me. And uh, before I left, before I left Whitesboro, I went in there, and I told, I told that, I told that officer, I said, I need to, I need to leave a note. And he said, What do you mean? And I said, I said nothing mean. I said, I wrote a note, and uh, to the chief and to the judge, lady judge, I said, Y'all treated me like a human being. And y'all are the, probably the best people that I've ever met in, in a small town community that didn't treat me like, didn't, you know, help me out and treated me like a person. And uh, it was good as grace. You know, well, you know, y'all are good to go. Well, the trooper took me back to the truck. Uh, over there at Gainesville, at the cell barn, because that's where they made me unload the cows at. Dan never come and got the truck. It was that white Kodiak. He never come and got the truck. And, uh, because when, uh, when I did get the chance to make the phone call, couldn't find out why they arrested me is because Lee never paid that citation on me. Because, because of that one truck, the speedometer, and uh, but anyway, moving right along at a snail's pace, about 
I was rolling to, I was rolling to, uh, by myself. I was, I went over to Bonham to Tommy Holt's place and unloaded, and I was coming back and I was, I, I was doing everything I was supposed to do, and I was in that school zone. And looked in the mirror, and here's a goddamn white fucking uh, Whitesboro fucking cop pulling me over. And when he got out of the truck, I was looking in the mirror. It's the police chief. <laughs> and he come up, and uh, I rolled the window down, and uh, he said, "Mr. Gray," I said, "Yes, sir." He goes. He shut my hand, and he told me, he goes, you're, you're a hell of a good man. And I said, was I breaking the law? And he goes, no. I just wanted to tell you, you're a hell of a good man. And I thank you, too. And he died, he died three months later of a massive heart attack. Um, let's see why I was in jail. That was the most. Uh, that was not probably the most. And then I've been in. I've been locked up in Monte County. People die there. <clears throat> Many times a year. They they put me in. They put me in. For when I got there, when they arrested me for that bogus DWI charge, there was a bunch of motherfuckers asleep in there. Uh, at 5 30 the next morning everybody got up fat fuckers uh, they, they gave you they give you a, a piece of toast a scoop of fucking uh, cream of wheat and a little old dixie cup which is about that big around about that tall full of fucking kool-aid All right, we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to come back quickly with what we was at.